It is great to be joined today by Ella Alshamahi, who is a National Geographic explorer, Neanderthal specialist in cave and unstable territories, and stand-up comic. Uh, Ella, it's so great to talk to you. I, I was first sort of more interested in learning about Neanderthals when I got my uh, DNA test results. And it said I had, you know, I was in the 55th percentile or something uh, in terms of Neanderthal yeah. DNA. And I didn't fully even really understand what that meant. And I started reading more about what is the history of Neanderthals uh, in the context of Homo sapiens. So maybe let's start there. I mean, for, for the average person who is watching and is a, a member of the of the human species, which is most of the people in the audience. Mm. Um, although if you saw my inbox, you, you might question some of that. Uh, what is important to know now about the sort of history and relationship of Neanderthals to modern humans? So I suppose the first point is that when you say human species, the truth is there's a number of human species, or at least there was. Mm. And that's because this is the only time in human history where only one species of Homo has walked this earth, which is kind of cool because, you know, once upon a time it was essentially a Lord of the Rings scenario and there was a whole pile of different species of human. So there's us, Homo sapiens, um, and then another one, probably the most famous, is Homo neanderthalensis, and it's such a mouthful that everyone just says Neanderthal. Um, so Neanderthals are our cousins. Um, and what happened was they left Africa before we did. They evolved into Neanderthals, and then when we left Africa, we bumped into them again. And so the question for a really long time was what happened when we bumped into them? You know, did we bump into them? And when we bumped into them, was it make love, not war, or was it war, not, you know, whatever? And it, it turned out we don't really know the full story, but what we know for sure is that there was, uh, there was some loving. Yeah, I mean, so, so correct me if I'm wrong, but for some time it seemed that though the predominant point of view was that there was no mixing at all between uh, what we would now consider modern humans and Neanderthals. I, I, is that true? Was it that cut and dry at, at some point? And what happened to change that? So that was the dominant view. That was definitely the dominant view. It was it was definitely still a massive debate in, in paleoanthropology, but it was pretty much the dominant view that, you know, we, we, we didn't really interact with them. And, and we certainly um, didn't have, you know, um, anything other, you know, th there was no mingling as such, uh, but it turned out that, that there was. And the, the way that we found that out was actually just quite incredible. It's actually ancient DNA. So for a really long time, our field was essentially digging into the ground and, and bringing up bones, right? And then they managed to extract DNA from these really, really old fossils. And it was a revolution. It completely revolutionized our field. Um, and, and when they looked at this ancient DNA, they were able to see that actually, you know what? Yeah, there, there were a number of interactions there. And so essentially, everyone outside of some Saharan Africa has some Neanderthal ancestry, because at some point our ancestors were basically having sex with Neanderthals. <laughs> so I know that- the, And that's where your the, DNA comes from, by the way. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Just, which, we, yeah. which we will get to. Um, well, I know that yeah, yeah. our language abilities uh, were significantly superior to Neanderthals, but, and I know we, we may not have a definitive answer to this. What do we, suspect about what our ability to communicate would have been with Neanderthals. I mean, if you imagine sort of like a spectrum where on one side, you know, we, we try to communicate with a parakeet and it's extraordinarily mm -hmm. difficult versus like someone you disagree with politically, where, where it might just be sort of ideological disagreements. Do we have a sense of where on that spectrum our communication with yeah. Neanderthals would have been? So I think it's probably important to actually say that um, I mean, you're right, we don't really know. It's hard when something's been dead for so long. You know, they've, they've been gone for 40,000 years, right? So it's really hard to work out what was happening there with language. Um, and, I, and I have to say, when I first started uh, studying Neanderthals, um, there was a debate as to whether they had language at all, whether mm -hmm. they spoke at all. Um, now I think the consensus is pretty much that they had language. The debate is whether they had a proto-language, something that you know, isn't as advanced as ours, um, or if it was a bit more advanced than that, that I think that's more where the debate is. And it's really difficult to work that out. So genetically, um, there are some indicators that they, uh, they had language, but possibly we were able to do something or we're able to do something that they 
they can't, but it's, it's really difficult because it's still early days with some of the genetic stuff. Um, but beyond that, you, you look at the way that they lived. So you look at the way that they were able to express themselves through art, through culture, through their hunting methods, and you look at that and you, how did you do that if you didn't at least have a proto language? So it's, it's a difficult one, but then you've got to think as well, the truth is Homo sapiens probably didn't have, well, you know, the language that we have right now is the result of probably cumulative culture, this idea that every single generation improves upon the generation before it. Um, and so truthfully, we were probably, you know, our vocab was probably limited as well back then. So, yeah, so it's, it's a difficult one to work out, right? But it's, it's always fun to speculate how that first, how those first few meetings would have gone, you know, would, would the Neanderthal have been seen as some backwards type person uh, who you can barely communicate with or were we on par with them so it's really difficult to tell yeah and i eventually i want to get to the sort of like intellectual dominance over neanderthals mm. but before we do that i mm. mean if if we were talking about uh survival of either uh neanderthals mm. or homo sapiens coming down to sort of physical uh abilities we yeah. would have been significantly outmatched by Neanderthals. Is that safe? Is that in question at all at this point? You know what? That was that was a really fun exercise. So we uh, we we made this uh, series about Neanderthals. In fact, it's coming out on Wednesday in the U.S. on PBS. And um, one of the big debates we had was who would win in a fight between a Neanderthal and ourselves. And it was really, really difficult. Um, and I think the consensus is probably that it would have been you wouldn't have wanted to meet a Neanderthal uh, down a dark alleyway because they're definitely, they're stronger than us. They were more robust than us. But there is this possibility that because we were taller, thinner, uh, kind of able to probably bounce around a little bit better, hmm. that we might have had that kind of, so it would have been an interesting fight to watch. Um, let's just say that the, the the show that comes out Wednesday, um, there's actually a scene where we show a Neanderthal and, a, and, and ourselves fighting. Um, and um, it's, it's interesting to watch because Neanderthals are really short, um, you know, compared to ourselves. I mean, I mean, they were still five foot five, so they're not like tiny, but um, but it was just that muscle strength was just something else, you know. So then when it comes to the intellectual side, I mean, is it mm -hmm. that what, yeah. what is the predominant theory now as to why ultimately Homo sapiens dominated Neanderthals? And there are no longer Neanderthals, and we find ourselves in this unique situation where Homo sapiens is the one human species on Earth. So um, I would say that um, there's 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 such a, a a debate about this, and there's no consensus whatsoever. Hmm. Um, if you look every single year, there's a different, um, there's a few papers that come out, but I remember one year there was a suggestion that um, rabbits were the reason that Neanderthals went extinct. <laughs> and it was the idea that um, we ate uh, more rabbit than they did. Um, and and I, I just kind of mentioned that as an example to show how, how much we disagree in our field about what caused their extinction. I, I'd say though, Neanderthals had a really, really good run. So Neanderthals were around for, you know, maybe 300, maybe 400,000 years. Not that long. So it might not actually be a case of they died out because we beat them at it. You know, like yes. it, it might not be that simple. But they were really successful species. Um, I think there's an argument um, that's quite... Um, a lot, a lot of people kind of take on this argument that uh, we may have had an advantage um, in terms of our population size. So we tended to have larger groups. Um, there was more of us and we were possibly doing something more advanced culturally. It's really difficult, though, to, to be sure that that's why we ended up with an edge. I think. Personally, I'm inclined to, to think we were doing something that no other species before us was doing, which was something about our group size, these, these bigger group sizes, which meant that culturally we were able to transmit knowledge in a, in a more interesting, more radical way, maybe. Um, and that uh, as a result, our cultural expression was more advanced. But even me saying that's really controversial. Some people would really disagree with that and say, no, Neanderthals had, you know, cultural expression that was really advanced too. So it's, it's one of the big mysteries, you know, why 
are we here and they're not? And it's not just about them, actually. In so many ways, it's about all the other species that went extinct as well as we became more and more dominant. All these other human species also became extinct. So the question is, what, what, what happened? You know, did was that a result of us? And it, I mean, if you just look at the numbers, it kind of looks like it might be, you know, it's we suddenly appeared, we spread out of Africa and suddenly all these other species of human just started to disappear. What type of advance in science would be necessary in order for us to get more definitive answers to some of these questions? Or is it actually the opposite, which is that as more and more time uh, elapses, it will become even more difficult to get definitive answers to some of these questions? Yeah, I think some of these answers you're never going to find, you know, you're, you're not like, I don't know. But then then I think nobody expected there to, to you know, there to be this massive ancient DNA discovery, right? Because because that was something that completely revolutionized our field. Then suddenly you were able to say definitively, yes, we interbred with them. And the thing is, David, like, you know, let's be honest, like 30, 40 years ago, if you'd have said to a paleoanthropologist or an archaeologist, can you say definitively and will you ever be able to say definitively that we, uh, you know, interbred with them, the mm. answer would be no, we, there's no definitive way of knowing. So the truth is, I'm kind of hesitant to, to, to be to kind of give you an answer to that, because the truth is, 40 years from now, somebody might discover something um, that really kind of blows the top off it. But I think it's going to be really tough. I think ancient DNA is really interesting. And the more we look at that, the more interesting it becomes. Um, and then the more fossil finds, that's also really important. Um, and uh, sometimes a fossil find or an archaeological find will really shed light on something so there was a find that there's been a number of finds uh recently where people have said look this is really good proof of what they were able to do and it's not it's not small these are really culturally advanced um people so i don't know it's yeah we may uh we may not even know the ways yet in which we would learn things about the past when it's 50 or 100 years from now and that is obviously exactly. Im impossible to know uh, exactly. Ella Al Shamahi. So this Wednesday, American viewers can see what yes. what exactly should people be watching on Wednesday. So there's two things that I think are really cool. Uh, one is so it's on PBS and it's at nine. Uh, it's at ten nine central, um, and the the coolest thing I think is that we managed to get the, the Hollywood king of motion capture i.e. Andy Serkis who brought us you know Gollum, Caesar, King Kong he basically brings the most scientifically accurate Neanderthal to life and what we do is we get that Neanderthal and we put him on the London Metro and we ask you if you would change carriages and it's really really interesting because when you see <laughs> this this person brought to life I think I think people's responses will be very, very, yeah, very interesting as to whether they'd really change carriages or not. Because, I feel you know, like in the New York City the Metro, flash. in the New York City Metro, nobody would even pay any attention. But I've been on the London Metro and it's a much uh, more calm and sort of uh, <laughs> it's a different experience where I feel like a Neanderthal would stand out more in the New York City Metro, at least the four or five train. It's just like a, it's just another day commuting, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, it, I, I think there's definitely an element of wondering if it's just the place that that, that we put this poor person in. But no, there's. <laughs> it's definitely. A, it's definitely a really, really interesting one. And then the other thing we ask is about medical stuff because there's there's now a lot of talk about the medical implications of getting this DNA from Neanderthals because it looks like there's a number of diseases which we have mm. and also immunities which we've picked up. Um, that are a direct result of Neanderthals, which is in of itself just a new field and just fascinating. So there's some of that as well. We have been speaking with Ella Al Shamahi. Check it out, National Geographic this Wednesday, 10, 9 PBS. Central. PBS, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry National PBS, Geographic. Sorry. She is a National Geographic explorer. The programming is on PBS. Uh, Ella, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thanks for having me.